Hello, in this tutorial I'm going to explain you how to serve an image as an attachment using the SP32 and Arduino core. As target board I'm going to be using an SP32 Firebeetle board from DFROM. So in the previous tutorial we saw how we could set up an HTTP web server on the SP32 and serve an image. But with the method that we used, basically the image is served um, to, the, to the web browser, which was the client used, and it will interpret uh, the image and display it in line uh, to the user that is interacting with the browser. But in some cases, we may want uh, the browser to have a different behavior instead, which is downloading the file as attachment uh, and don't display it in line to the user. So basically, we are going to cover how to do that uh, in this tutorial. The first thing we need to do is making sure that the image is available on the SPIF file system beforehand. And the easiest way of doing this is basically using uh, an Arduino IDE plugin that we have covered in the previous tutorial that allows us to upload uh, content to the ASP32 SPIFS file system without having to develop any program or uh, any auxiliary code to do that. So basically, um, I'm going to leave the link in the description for the video where we cover the basics. But basically, uh, after you uh, install that plugin, you'll have access to these options under the Tools menu, which is SP32 Sketch Data Upload, that basically will allow us to upload data from a folder um, to the SPIFS file system. Basically, just to sum up, what we need to do is inside your Arduino Sketch folder, we need to have here um, a folder called data. So basically, when you, you create a sketch for the first time, you just have the .ino file, and you should create here a folder called data, and then place your uh, content, all the content that you, you want to upload to the file system here. In our case, it will be image. It's the same that we have uh, covered in the previous tutorial. And basically, uh, after having this uh, setup ready, just going here to the Tools menu and click the SP32 Sketch Data Upload button. So I've already done that because the procedure takes a while. So I'm assuming that from this point onward, we also have already uploaded the image to your file system, the image that we want to be serving uh, as an attachment. So moving on to the actual code, the first thing we need to do as usual is including the, the libraries that we need. In our case, we need the Wi-Fi.h to connect the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network, the SPIFS.h so we can uh, interact with the SPIFS file system, and the SP Async web server, uh, which will allow us to set up an HTTP asynchronous web server on the SP32. Then we are going to need uh, the credentials of the Wi-Fi network, so the SP32 can be connected to it. And we need an object of this class, a sync web server, that we have been using in countless previous tutorials. So basically this, this is exactly the same, um, the same class. And we need an object of this class uh, that we are going to use to set up the routes of our server. As input of the constructor, we pass the port where the server will be listening, and as usual, we are going to use port 80, which is the default HTTP port. So, moving on to the Arduino setup, uh, where we are going to write the rest of the code. We start by opening a serial connection to output some uh, content from our, uh, from our program. Then we are going to mount the SPIFS file system, so we can later interact with it. And then we are going to connect the SP32 to the Wi-Fi network using the credentials that we have declared before. And at the end, we are going to print the local IP assigned to it because the client needs to know this local IP in order to reach uh, the server. So, moving on, what we need to do now is configuring the routes of our server. For comparison, we are going to set up two routes. One where um, we are going to serve the image uh, as uh, an attachment, which means the browser will download it, and another where we are going to serve that image, let's say normally, like we did before, uh, so the browser will uh, display that image in line to the user that is interacting with the browser. So focusing on the, the first case, which is the one that we are covering here that is new, we are going to set up this route uh, to serve the file as an attachment. So we are going to call it slash download. You can name it however you want, but uh, I've given this simple name. And in terms of HTTP methods allowed, we are going to just listen to HTTP GET requests uh, because the client will be fetching the image. And then we are going to declare here uh, a lambda function that will be the, the route handling function and we are going to implement it using the C++ lambda syntax uh, for a more compact syntax where we can declare the function in line.
Then in order to serve the image to the client, what we need to do is calling this send method on our async web server uh, request. So we are going to receive as input of our route ending function a pointer to this object. And this is the object that we should use uh, in order to get uh, an answer back to the client. So this send method is overloaded as we have seen in previous tutorials. There are multiple ways of calling this send method with different arguments uh, and the format that we are going to use here uh, today is basically um, a format that allows us to specify a file in the SPIFS file system uh, or in a generic file system uh, basically it's however we want in our particular case we are going to use the SPIFS file system but this should be generic enough for other types of file systems such as the FAT file system uh, and basically we specify a file uh, in that file system, which will be served to the client. And then we specify a content type and we say uh, if we want the, the content to be served, to be interpreted by the browser or uh, download as an attachment. So, but looking into each individual argument of this send method. So the first argument that we need to pass is basically an object of uh, the FES uh, class, which stands for file system, which is a more generic class uh, that then this PIFS object implements, uh, which basically exposes methods for us to interact with uh, that particular file system. For example, the, the FAT file system object that allows to, intera to interact with the FAT file system uh, also extends this uh, FES class. So in theory, we can also use the FAT file system here instead of the SPIFS one. But in our case, we are going to use the SPIFS file system um, like we have been doing in previous tutorials. So basically, we pass here the SPIFS object, and th these objects will be used under the hood by the HTTP web server framework in order to fetch the file we want and serve it to the client. So besides passing here this object, we also need to pass as input of this method the path to our uh, to our resource to to the file in our uh, in our file system, and in this case the image uh, it is the image name which is test.jpg, and since we have uploaded the image. Uh, from the root of the data folder. It means that this image was created in the root of the SPIFS file system, which is why we just need to use this path. Then as a uh, third argument, we need to pass the content type uh, of the file that we are serving to the client. And in our case, we are serving a JPEG image. So we use this content type. And finally, this is a parameter, basically a Boolean parameter, which is optional. So when we don't set this parameter, it will take the value false. But basically, this parameter indicates if the file should uh, download, sorry, if the browser should download the file as an attachment in case it has the value true, or if it should interpret the content in case, in case this Boolean value has the value false. This is why in the previous tutorial, when we serve the image and we omit this parameter, the, the file was basically being interpreted uh, because it defaults to false. And when it has the value false, the browser will simply interpret the content and display it to the user. In our case, since we want the file to download it as an attachment, we set here the value true. And this is it. Basically, with this configuration, uh, we have set this route to serve the image, this test.jpg image, uh, as downloadable. And then the browser will download this image as an attachment when we make a request to this route. So for the sake of comparison, I've declared here uh, another route. We called it render slash render, which also listens to HTTP GET requests and also receives a Lambda function, uh, with, uh, which has an implementation that consists also on sending the same file back to the client. But instead, uh, this fourth parameter, this fourth Boolean, uh, will have the value false, and uh, which would be the same as having just this, as I've said before, but we are going to pass this parameter explicitly. And basically, it will tell the browser that it should interpret um, this file and display it in line to the to the user uh, and in this case the image will be rendered and displayed in the browser pretty much like uh, what happened in the previous video tutorial where we are just serving the image um, without specifying any any value for this flag so this is it we have the two routes uh, configured basically we are going to compare when testing uh, but after configuring these routes, we just need to call this begin method on our server object and it should start listening to incoming requests. So I've already uploaded both the image and the code to my SP32. 
as you can see here it's already running and it already printed here the IP address assigned to my uh, ASP32 and now I'm going to use Google Chrome and as you can see here I've already reached this endpoint this slash render so I'm going to reach it again and as you saw uh, it, it basically renders to me the image like expected let me open here a new tab so we can see this from scratch okay and it is basically serving to me uh, the image and since this was a second route where we set the flag the download flag to false basically it is telling the browser uh, to just show uh, interpret and show uh, the file that was that was returned and as you can see here we can see the image uh, that we have previously uploaded to the SPIS file system so this was uh, let's say the normal behavior now if we went uh, to reach the other route, the download one, we should serve the server uh, the file as attachment. Let's see what happens. Okay, and as you can see here, it show, it uh, downloaded the file. Uh, it has this uh, parenthesis one because I have already uh, tested this this code beforehand, so it already had an image in my file system with this name. But basically, as you can see here, uh, the image was downloaded uh, and was not interpreted by the browser. We're going to test this in a different tab just to confirm everything goes well. So basically, let's change this to download. And again, as you can see here, it downloaded the file. It is appending the, the parentheses too because I have I have already two files with this name. But basically, the behavior was expected. The image was served uh, as a, a downloadable attachment. And this is it. So this gives us more freedom to serve content. In this case, uh, an image uh, in two different formats because probably there will be use cases where we want the image to be served to the browser directly to be interpreted. Uh, but probably there are other use cases where we want for example, the, the client to download the image uh, as an attachment and we need to have a way of telling that to the client. Uh, that's it. It's very simple. Hope you have enjoyed this tutorial and thank you very much for watching.